moment, Mr. Kurtz is going to tell us something about these ancient Egyptian sarcophagi. In the meantime, I'd like to remind any of you who might have tuned in late that you're watching a remote telecast of the International Broadcasting Company's public service program, Touring the Town. Tonight, we are visiting the Egyptian room at the Northside Museum. Our host and guide is Carl Kurtz, curator of this fascinating exhibit. Now, where's Mulligan? He should be up there to help them open that sarcophagus. Well, I saw him over there just a moment ago. I should have gotten someone else to assist the floor manager. <laughs> now, this mummy case here is a perfect example of 12th Dynasty art. Now, if you'll notice the fine detail in the carving. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, may we look inside and see the mummy? Where? I'm sure that our television viewers would want to see what an Egyptian pharaoh looked like 4,000 years ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, but cleaning up in the door shut on me. There you are. He's sabotaging me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, accidents will happen. This is one of our IBC page boys. Oh, Wait, no. Excuse me, sir. I can't look at This live television is going to be the excuse death me, of me. We're going off the air in 20 seconds, Mr. Brown. Thank heaven. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to say that our time has come to a close. I, I hope that uh, uh, our visit to the Egyptian room tonight has been both instructive and educational. This is Harvey Flanders saying, Ouch! <laughs> Well, Pat, I thought the show went off pretty well. Under the circumstances, yes. Well, I, I was wondering if... Shh. Here comes Mr. Brown, and he has that look in his eye. Well, Mulligan... I thought you'd be interested to know that my blood pressure just went up 20 points, which is more than I can say for our rating. Well, Mr. Brown, I want to explain how I got caught in the sarcophagus. Please, don't. I'm only on the verge of hysteria now. Thank heavens it wasn't in color, too. Really, Mr. Brown, it, it, it wasn't intentional. You should be proud of Mickey Pat. He achieved something tonight. He set television back 50 years. <laughs> You know, Mickey, I think the highlight of the show was when you stepped out of that mummy case. Don't rub it in. Oh, Mickey, here's your father. Oh, I wonder what he's doing talking to Mr. Kurtz. Oh, well, maybe he's looking for you. I don't think so. He's supposed to be on duty tonight investigating that smuggling ring. Let's get a little closer, Liz. You did get my letter. Yeah. Well, then you know you don't have too much time to make up your mind. Max is getting impatient. Well, this isn't an easy decision to make. Let me think it over tonight. Take my advice, Sergeant. Close the deal. You'll never regret it. I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all, Pat. Well, now, don't be suspicious. Let's catch up with your father and ask him. No, he doesn't like me butting in when he's working on a case. Well, what possible connection can there be between a museum and a smuggling ring? I don't know, but it's well worth investigating. Oh, I don't think I... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes Mr. Kurtz. May I help you? Oh, uh, no, uh, no, we were just, uh, we were just admiring the Egyptian comic strips on the walls. <laughs> you mean the hieroglyphics? The hiero... The ancient Egyptian form of writing. Yes, yes, it's very interesting, sir. Uh, what does this one back here say? He who pries into the lives of others will not keep his own for long. <laughs> Words to live by. <laughs> Look at all the stuff your father left in the pockets of this coat he once sent to the cleaner. He's been so absent-minded lately, there must be something worrying him. Have you noticed it too, Mom? You know, last night when we were doing that remote from the Northside Museum... Well, funny you should mention that. I it to your father from the museum. It is? May I see it, please? Northside Museum, Carl Kurtz. Uh-huh. I think I've got it, Mom. What? 
This is a threatening letter from that smuggling gang that Pop's investigating. Oh, no, my God. I tell you, Mom, it's a, it's a threatening letter. This fella, Carl Kurtz, is the curator at the museum, and I saw him talking to Pop. Looked like he was threatening him or something. Hey, we're not going to look at your father's mail. Now, that's, Mom, a... that's an omen if I ever saw one. This letter's just dying to be read. Mom, please, let's read it. Do you think so, Ruby? Of course. Dear Sergeant Mulligan, this is to remind you that we haven't settled our little business transaction and time is running out. Aha! I can't stall Max much longer. He's getting upset. You know the way he is. Hope your family is in good health. Sincerely, Carl. P.S. I sent this to your office because I don't think you want your wife to know. Oh-ho! It's mysterious, isn't it? It's as plain as the nose on your face. This fella, Carl, is trying to contact Max, the head guy. Evidently, they tried to get to Poppity to have no part of this scheme. And now Max is becoming impatient. This looks like trouble. Oh, Michael, are you sure? Now, after all, this Carl person does say, hope your family is in good health. That sounds friendly enough. Uh, it's a friendly threat, that's what it is. <laughs> hope your family is in good health is just their way of saying, put up or else. What are we going to do? Don't worry, Mom, they made one mistake. They're going to have to cope with two mulligans. Don't you worry, Pop's in a jam, but I'll get him out of it. Well, it's plain to see that this wasn't typed on this kind of a machine, huh? Well, what kind of a machine was it typed on? That's the eighth one you've tested already. Kind of confusing, isn't it, Fred? You know, maybe that letter your father got was written by hand. Now all we gotta do is find a guy that writes like a typewriter. Yeah. <laughs> a guy that writes like a typewriter. <laughs> oh, well, there you, you go horsing around again, huh? Look, if you can't be serious, just take yourself off the case, Fred, right? All right, take it easy. I mean, be a little more serious. We'll give it the lemon test. The what? The lemon test? The lemon test, certainly. Now who's horsing around? I'm not horsing around. Believe me, now the chemicals from the lemon will bring the secret writing out, and I know there is secret writing on this paper. Now, here we go. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. There it is. Here it comes, see? See it coming? Huh? Isn't that what it doesn't say, the United Paper Company? Huh? What does that mean? That's the watermark on the paper. All you did was spoil the writing. Well, look, we'll, we'll try the fire test now. The fire test? That's right. Listen, because we've got the lemon juice on the paper now, the fire will bring out the writing. No, if there's no, any no, there. No, wait a minute. Just hold the paper for me, Well, you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah, now watch. Here. Watch. Careful. Out the hmm? Here it comes. Huh? There it is. Hold it. Huh? You, you're barbecuing. Wait a minute. What's wait, barbecuing? Wait, 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 What are you trying to bring out? The secret writing or the fire department? I, I know what you're thinking, Mr. Brown, but don't jump to any conclusions. I just walk in here and I find you two hard-working employees squeezing lemons and doing the fire dance. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I go get a butterfly net. Well, you did it to us again. Your Majesties. <laughs> Fred! Fred! Look, come on out. The coast is clear. Fred! <laughs> coming up and back of me and tapping me on the shoulder at the wrong time. Well, can I help it if you're so jumpy? I don't know what you're so afraid of. Now, look, never mind about that. We came here to accomplish a mission. We're going to finish it. we got to find out where those smugglers hide their stuff. All right, let's get started. Okay. Hi, sweetie. Where you been all my life? You may be 3,000 years old, but you don't look a day over 2,000. <laughs> Nefrasetti, eh? 
Mind if I call you Nuffer for short? <laughs> ah, they're playing our song. Shall we dance? La -da -da, da -da -dee, da -da -da -dee. She's crazy about me. Freddy, try and find the light switch. Don't go away, sweetie. I'll be back. <laughs> How can we find any clues? Mick, there's no light in here. I just found the light switch. Do you think it's all right to turn them on? Well, sure, turn it on. Yeah. We'll just turn on the lights and go about our work quietly. <laughs> explanation as to why you were picked up at one o'clock in the morning holding hands with a bunch of mummies? We didn't do anything wrong, Sergeant Mulligan. I was dancing with Nefersetti and Mick was checking the sarcophagus. No, wait a minute, Fred. I'll, I'll tell Pop the real reason we were there. That's just what I'm waiting to hear. Well, the truth is we were trying to help you. Help me? Dancing with a 3,000-year-old queen of the Nile? Well, you see, Mom and I accidentally saw that letter you got from Mr. Kurtz. You know... The, the one threatening your life from the smugglers. Smugglers? Yeah, and when we read it, we knew right then and there what was up. You mean your mother read that letter? Yeah. Well, that does it. I wanted it to be a surprise. A surprise? A surprise that you were being blackmailed? Nobody's being blackmailed. I ordered an onyx necklace for your mother's birthday, and Carl Kurtz was going to get it from his brother Max, who's an importer. Oh. But what about that line in the letter that said, time is running out? He was simply reminding me that I better hurry up and make up my mind because your mother's birthday's next week, so I went down last night and gave him a deposit. Well, you did it to us again. <laughs> Gee, imagine me thinking that nice Mr. Kurtz was a smuggler all this time. <laughs> How wrong can you get? Max, I believe this is our greatest harvest. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Is this all that goes with the mummy? The blue whites are coming later. Huh? Give me a hand with that. All right. A master stroke, Carl. Uh, tomorrow night when this mummy is going to England, it'll have company. One hundred thousand dollars worth of company. <laughs> now, let's dispose of the rest of these gems. I have to open up the room in an hour. All right. I'm sorry, the Egyptian exhibit doesn't open for an hour yet. I know, Mr. Kurtz, but we just want to tell you something. Who is it? The two young men who were trapped in here last night. Do you think they suspect anything? Impossible. I don't like it, Carl. We'll only take a minute of your time, Mr. Kurtz. Hurry up. Hello, Mr. Kurtz. Really, gentlemen, we're very busy trying to clean the well, place I up. We're not interfering yeah, with well, anything. Yeah, tell them why we came down here, Mick. Yes, you see, I wanted to come down and apologize about last night. I hope there was no harm done. Please <laughs> don't handle the exhibit. It is priceless, and you might break it. Oh, that's priceless? <laughs> Looks just like a little old vase to me. What do you got, diamonds hidden inside? Oh, wait a minute, Fred, don't start that again. Oh, well, you've got to admit that's pretty funny, Mick. <laughs> you know what he thought? He thought you were mixed up in a smuggling ring. Thought you were smuggling diamonds out of the country, hidden in the vases and in the mummy. <laughs> That's quite a scream, isn't it? <laughs> Did you hear what he said, Max? He thought we were smugglers. <laughs> oh, oh, pardon me, sir, but you are Max the importer. Well, you're getting the onyx necklace for my mother's birthday, I presume. You... You're Officer Mulligan's son? Yes, my pop explained the whole thing to me. I just came by to apologize. Yeah, yeah me too. I hope there are no hard feelings. Oh, no hard feelings, Good. gentlemen, but please, Good. would you go? You now? see, we're senior pages over at the IBC Broadcasting Company. If you care to come over and see a show sometime, we'll smuggle you in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it, Carl. Officer Mulligan's son. I don't like it. You're getting upset over nothing, Max. If Officer Mulligan didn't suspect anything, why would his son... I don't know, but if they come around again, I'm not going to let them get away that easy this time.
Oh, uh, sorry to interrupt again, sir, but I'd excuse don't us. Be rude, but but you but see, I'd, I'd like to get a pair of earrings to go with the necklace that my pop's going to get my mom for her birthday. That's completely You know, I have to get her something also. It's completely Perhaps maybe you can suggest something? I hate to put you to a lot of trouble. No, I'm sorry we can't. Incidentally, I'm awfully sorry that I accused you of being a smuggler. I, my brother isn't okay. feeling well, and you're upsetting him. Well, now, I if, apologize. What more can I do, sir? Uh, I didn't mean get back to, to work. Please, I'm If you gentlemen don't gentlemen. go We're now. leaving. We're leaving now. What's the matter with you? Thank you. Why are you rushing here? What's Thank you. Don't be a fool, Max. Fred, what's the matter? Have you gone crazy? Th there's nothing wrong with me, Mick, but there's plenty wrong with them. They're jewel smugglers. No. Don't start that again. That's what got us in all kinds of trouble before. I'm trying to tell you that you were right, Mick. Well, I... I was wrong, Fred, and I admit it. Look, I just picked up a vase in there. The base of it was crawling with jewels. Just forget about it, will you, please? It got us into all kinds of trouble, remember? Look, if you don't believe me, go ahead in there yourself. Pick up the vase. See if I'm lying to you. All right. Let's settle this once and for all. Gotcha, gotcha. I noticed something about that guy, Max, too. Yeah? Either he's got a very bad tailor or he's got a gun in his coat pocket. A gun? <laughs> Max? Max is an importer, remember? And look, here's what we gotta do. We gotta hide out here again tonight. Tonight? We gotta expose this whole racket once and for all. But last night, don't you remember last night? Once is enough. Mick, we gotta do it as loyal citizens. No, Fred, absolutely not. But we've got to, Mick. It's, no. It's our... No. It's, but... No, no, no. <laughs> Freddy. Freddy, you can come out now. The coast is clear. Freddy's not here, but maybe I can help you. I'm Mickey Rooney. Are you satisfied? Are they or are they not smugglers? How about that? What's our next move? Well, we'll call Pop and let the police handle it all. How are we going to call them? The phone's outside and we're locked in here, remember? The burglar alarm. We did it before and we can do it again. Mick, you're a genius. I just turn on the alarm and in no time at all when I have police surrounding the place. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Something's wrong. <laughs> It's not working. Maybe they, maybe they didn't pay their burglar alarm bill. They shut it off. Great. What are we gonna do now? Gotta figure out a way to get the police here. Somebody's coming. I hope it's the night watchman. Maybe it's Carl and Max. Oh, let's run for cover, huh? Wait a minute. What are we running for? There are only two of them, and there are two of us. We can handle this. There's more than two of them, Mick. There's Carl, Max. And Max's bulging coat pocket. Eh? <laughs> Max's bulging coat pocket. Head for the hills. <laughs> Tonight's the night. Tomorrow, the jewels will be on their way to England. The truck will be here in a couple of hours to pick up the stuff. Good. Say, where, where did you put the big blue-white diamonds? In the case? Under the mummy? Good. So the rest of the gems are in these vases, right? That's right. I decided it wouldn't be wise to use the big urn. So there's nothing in here, huh? No, it's empty. Are you sure young Mulligan and his friend are not wise to our operation? I'm positive. If we fool the father, what makes you think the son would be any brighter? I don't know. He might have seen something. Relax, will you? <laughs> I still wish you would have let me handle it my way. You're too impetuous, Max. It's working out better my way. Now take it easy and relax. I'll relax when the staff will be safely on the boat for England. Are you catching cold? No, I'm not catching cold. But you caught. I didn't cough. I didn't like the sound of that cough, Max. But I didn't. 
Now look what you've done. Your cigarette's smoldering in the urn. Ah, uh, that's what's been making you cough. I'll take care of that. <laughs> Come on, let's go get a drink while we wait for the truck. Good idea. <laughs> Are you all right, Mick? I don't know. I almost drowned. Ooh, those Egyptian cigarettes. Well, you should have never inhaled. Listen, if I'd stayed in there any longer, I'd have been barbecued. Hey, did you hear them say they stashed the big diamonds in that sarcophagus with a mummy in it? I sure did. And that gives me an idea how we can capture the whole smuggling ring. Yeah? Come here. Now. See the mummy? They're going to send it to England, right? Yeah. Now, here's my plan. One of us takes the place of the mummy in the box. They ship it over to England. When we get out, we capture the British branch as well, huh? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Let me understand this. We wrap one of us up in the mummy. Yeah? Carl and Max come, loaded on the boat. Boat? And one of us sails to England, wrapped inside the box. Right, right. Mick, you're a genius. You like the idea? When do we wrap you up? Well, you can... <laughs> wait a minute. What do you mean? I had you penciled in for the job. Oh, no, not me, Mick. I'm a nervous traveler. Uh, I get seasick when I pass a bird bath. Uh, no, you're the guy for the job. Oh, I couldn't possibly sure do it, Sure you Fred. could, no, Mick. I can no, just see it now. No. Westminster Abbey, Piccadilly Circus, number 10 Downing Street. Oh, they say the weather's beautiful this time of year. I tell you, I couldn't possibly do it. Wait a minute. There's a flaw in our plan, Fred. A flaw? Sure. Now, suppose one of us, suppose it's me. In the mummy suit, I land in England, somebody says, where's your passport, huh? So what? The worst they could do is send you back for postage due. Come on, we got work to do, man. Right? <laughs> yes, sir, boy. We... Hey, come on, help me, will you? <laughs> You're wrapping me too tight. You're cutting the circulation. I want to give you a good fit, Mick. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. You, you don't have to wrap my head up, do you? Look, couldn't I just make a mummy face? I refuse to do a sloppy job. Uh, well, goodbye, Mick. No, wait a minute. Look, wait a minute. Fred, I, I'm not sure I want to go. Look, suppose when I get to England, I, I, I'm not able to, to... I don't want to travel like Fred. Fred, listen, I couldn't eat you, sleep or... You drink. don't have to go all the way to England, Mick. Just stick it out till you get to the warehouse. Huh? I'll tell you. Then we can capture them there. Look, I'm not sure I want to go. Listen, Come on, please. Mick. Here we go. Oh, sit, Daisy. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Look, wait a minute, Fred. Jump in there now. Oh, boy. Well, bon voyage, Mick. Wait a minute, Fred. I'll look my way. Hey, shh, keep quiet. I hear them coming. <laughs> Your hands, Sergeant Mulligan. I told you, Cal, he was onto us all the time. Too bad, Sergeant. I was beginning to like you. We've been watching your little operation for a month. You don't think I'm by myself, do you? So, you have the museum surrounded, have you? They'll never see us when we leave. <laughs> Ordering that necklace was just a trick. I knew it. Shut up, Max. We gotta work fast. First, we dispose of the sergeant, then we get on that boat to England. I'll handle this, Sergeant, with pleasure. Let's go. I don't know how. Goodbye, Sergeant. Look out, Pop! Drop that gun. Michael! I'm sorry, Pop. Well, it seems that the place is full of mulligans. Get his gun. Hand him that gun unless you want something to happen to this mummy. Turn that gun around and hand it over. Guy. That's Officer Doyle. They ought to have a program to tell the good guys from the bad guys. Come on. On your way. Come on. Get. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Freddy. Without you two, we wouldn't have cleaned this mess up so quickly. Come to think of it, without you two, we wouldn't have been in this mess in the first place. But we still got a problem, Pop. What's that? We still got to find a birthday present for Mom. Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. And now, a word from next week's sponsor. And that was the good word from the wonderful sponsors who will be bringing you our next show. Be with us then, won't you? In the meantime, I'm going to look around this Egyptian exhibit. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> See what I mean? Good night, folks.